Welcome back to the AOT Chronicles of Attack on Titan podcast. I am one of your hosts, Ronnie. I'm Chad. And we hope everyone has just had the happiest of New Year's. We are here because for a little bit of a sad reason, that is, there's just no Attack on Titan episode this week. It sucks, but I just polished off a nice cold brew from Starbucks. I'm feeling great. It's a great new year. Man, what a bummer that I don't get to listen to you drink that for the next two hours. (sighs) With these mics, man, I really need to start chewing on some ice. You definitely don't. Uh, So what, what exactly is not having an episode? They're giving their animators a break? Yeah, Japan's real big on this uh, whole New Year's thing. That's like their biggest holiday is New Year's. Right. So they're giving them the weekend off. But the episode's already made, so I don't know why they're not just releasing it, you know? Yeah, Ma- maybe pretty like... confused. Uh, if, why would you just not say, oh, we're not doing it for New Year's? Yeah, I- I'm sure that's kind of what they're saying, but I don't, don't know if they just Don't lie to me. They don't want to be put off schedule by releasing one and not animating something for the future. All right, well... I'm side eyeing them. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, this next episode, Aaron and Reiner meet, and we can't fucking see it. Like, come on. Now the good news is, here we are. We're recording on a Saturday as opposed to a Sunday. The vibe. I don't know about you. It's just really good over here. I'm feeling nice, feeling good. It's not a situation where I've got to, uh, you know, edit this at Sunday night and then wake up and go to my job, uh, running a ride at a theme park. For 10 hours the next Monday morning. Um, so I'm just, I'm feeling good. How about you? I mean, I feel great, dude. It's Saturday. Like I said, I fin- polished off a cold brew. I took a poo. Because yeah. that's normally what happens when you drink right. coffee. How'd that go? It went great. I mean, I drank coffee. I released my bowels. And now I'm just, ex- I'm pumped up for this episode. You know why I'm pumped up? Why? Ronnie, why? do you know why? Why? Because we got Hanje fucking Zo A. On this episode. Oh, you nailed that. Uh, yeah, so for anyone, basically, we're doing this by the seat of our pants. We have some notes and stuff, but just a little thing to expect from this episode. I think we're going to start it off with a little Tiber uh, yeah. conversation because there was a lot to take in uh, last episode, and we've reanalyzed it. We've taken in some feedback, and I think we're ready to tackle that a little bit more. We are definitely going to cover, here we are, I said we were going to figure this out on air. How do you say it? Is it Ilse's notebook? Is it Ilse's notebook? I don't know. We don't know, and I feel like we should just say it however we want to. We'll put emphasis on the ill, because it does have an L in the name. Yeah, it does have an For the longest time, I thought you were trying way too hard. I thought it was I-S-L-E, and I was like, well, it's just I'll. But no, that L, it slips right there in front of the S, and it just really... You really think Isayama is just going to give you that easy of a name, Ronnie? No. Well, listen, Isayama, for as far as animes go, in my experience, is a pretty nice guy. The fact that we have Keith, and we have Aaron, and... Even Armin. Willie? <laughs> Willie? I mean, I'm actually pretty appreciative of him, because... Isayama's son. Thanks. Arigato. Um, but no, and then we're just gonna, you know, we're gonna hang out. We haven't seen each other in a couple days. Maybe we'll just catch up. You look I've great, got some, man. I've got some, well, thank nice you. Nice beard. Thank you. You're wearing, uh, glasses. Yep. You don't wear glasses. It's UV glasses. My, you know, headaches. Yeah. Yesterday I was on my computer and my phone all day doing business work. Yeah. Um, New Year's Day, headaches? huh? You were doing a bunch of business work. Okay, I was really hungover and had a massive headache. Mm. So, you know, I had to wear these bad boys because if yep. you're really hungover and you're looking at computer screens all day, it just makes it worse. Yeah, can we all take a second to realize how shitty all of our eyes are going to be in 30 years? Because, yeah. you know, we are in our 20s and we're basically like the first generation who's just been staring at screens all their life. Hey, remember when doctors used to ask you how many hours of TV you oh watched my today? God. 10 years ago? Now it's like everyone's, you know, 15 hours a day, so they don't even give a shit anymore. They're like, well, maybe I only watch TV for an hour a day, but I also <laughs> stare at a computer for eight hours a day at work, and then I stare at my phone for who even knows how many hours yeah. a day. It's We are all going to be so blind. But luckily, you know... I mean, we're on our phones just looking at emails... 24 7 because we get them every five minutes 
And you know, I was worried about this, but then my dad brought up a good point. He was like, by the time you guys are old, you'll probably be able to like walk into an eye doctor. They take a picture with a flash and you walk out. You're like, oh, my eyes are all better. Yeah. So it's Or or we'll all be dead. (laughs) Or we'll all be dead. That's also an option. It's a give or take. But so did you have anything you wanted to say off the top? Yeah, I kind of just wanted to start off with the uh, the Willie and Magith conversation um, about Helos. Oh, so you didn't have anything to say off the top? You just wanted to get into the first. Oh, I thought that's what subject. You meant, like, off no, the I meant top. like no, I meant. Oh, off the top, yes, I have one thing to say. I've got to get this off my chest. Yeah, because you've really been <laughs> okay. fucking up. A shout out to our boy Lionel. Yeah. Pad- yeah. I mean, don't do. You just don't say his last name. <laughs> well, it's on the YouTube comment. Oh my god! Yes, this guy's pretty much just putting it out for the world to see. Anyway, yeah, we have plenty of shoutouts to get into. You guys have been doing great with the feedback. We love all of it. We'll get more into yeah, it later in the episode. Let's hold on. Let me talk about this guy. I, Chad I have has to been, shout him out. He's been dropping the ball. So we hard. work this guy. We work with this guy. We work this guy. <laughs> we work this guy. And. Okay, so he was talking to us. He loves Attack on Titan. He didn't believe that we had a podcast, so we yeah. had to prove it to him. Right. He's listening to it, and he goes, wow, you know, this is really good. So he just keeps listening to more episodes. We're he, being real incognito. Yeah. And, because, hey, here's a secret, guys. We are concealing our identities. What? <laughs> yeah, dude. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. My name's Chad, bro. Yours is Ronnie. Yeah, but anyways, you're right. Leonel, I'll give out his full name. He, uh, I've got his address too. If anybody wants that, just email us. Just email us the <laughs> podcast chronicles at gmail dot com. And he was listening to it on speakerphone for some reason because he is just like that. And his wife overheard the podcast, and and he goes, "Hey, I actually work with these two guys." And she says, "Wow, they sound really professional. Do you really work with them?" Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, if you're sitting at home and you're wondering, hey, why the fuck is Chad telling us this story? It was all so we. It was all an elaborate ploy so we could get to the end where Leo's wife said, "Hey, those guys sound professional." <laughs> so shout out Leo's wife. <laughs> uh, yeah. So thank God you got that off your chest. And with that, let's go ahead and hop on into the Tiber family shenanigans. All right. Um, I'll let you uh, start it off. Well, I'm just going to start off with this. Late, we posted the episode, we got some feedback, and the more we thought about it, I would say midweek, we were kind of down on ourselves. We were like, man, we really dropped the ball on this Tiber shit. We were just like completely wrong. But after rewatching it, after reanalyzing it, I think we made two flaws and two flaws only. Yeah. We didn't talk about the calling card, which, uh, let me be honest, I think is your fault. Yeah, well, I don't know why that's my fault, considering you had the summarization of that part of the episode, which falls on your hands. Well, so. I just felt like it was your fault, personally. I, you're supposed to be like well, watching Ronnie, over me, because I'm, you know, I've got a lot on my plate, whereas trust you me, it's are It's easy just... to watch over you. You're four foot ten. <laughs> okay, yep. Hey, that's fair. As long as – that's fair for you to say because you did admit that this was your fault, so thanks for that. Um, and then the second thing that we did – this was definitely your fault. We just missed giving – or mentioning that Willie gave Magath control of the military. Yeah, um, I, I'll put blame on myself, sure. Well, and – the fact that you did that made me feel kind of bad. It was also my fault. We both missed it. We got to be better. Well, you can take blame for the first part. I'll take blame for the second. How about that? 50-50. Um, okay, your part's worse, though. And so, <laughs> anyway, we're going to get into all that as we talk about it. I just wanted to say that up front because everything else, let's be honest, they're talking about wheels. They're talking about houses and rats that don't exist. It's all hidden in just these Metaphorical wor- encryptions. Thank you. Metaphorical encryptions. <laughs> Exactly right, Chaz. And we are just two anime watchers trying to dissect it all. We don't have any anime knowledge. And this is some deep stuff. And so we're trying our best. And for that, I say, put your chin up high. And no one, thank God, no one was mean to us. We just had some people helping us out. And to those people, I'll thank you in a minute. And the most of the people that helped us, they've read the manga. They know what's to come. So they, they know what's happening. We're just a couple of anime watchers. 
So we're sorry for, you know, kind of screwing the pooch on that one. Yeah. It was the first time where, other than, other than when we called uh, Kits Warham and Keith Sadies <laughs> for three episodes, it's the first time I felt like we'd really dropped the ball. And during this week, I felt like we were being hard on ourselves. And I totally blame you for that one. And I'm telling us to keep our chin up. Okay. Yeah, if you're a new listener, just a quick summary there. Chad had seen the entirety of Attack on Titan. I had only seen the first season when we started the podcast. Don't know why we did it, but we did. And we called Kit's Warriman. I know it's like Warman or something like that, but we like to call him Warman. Whatever he is. Who because cares? that guy was always worried. We called him Keith Sadies because we love Keith so much and we just desperately needed it to be him. <laughs> Turns out it wasn't him. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, let's move on. Okay, that one was my fault. So like I said, I had some listeners uh, to thank for helping us with that Tiber stuff. We had Dan, who was a first-time ride-in. He sent us some stuff. Uh, Christian had some hot takes that I'll get into. And Catherine, of course... She's making sure we stay in line, which is really nice of her to do since, Chaz, you aggressively yelled at her last episode. Still don't really know what that all was about. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just got to keep people in line, if you I, know what I mean. I Listen, personally, I've always said we can keep it real. You do the podcast how you want to do it. I'll do it how I want to do it. I would prefer you not yell at our listeners, but I've Catherine said, appreciated it, I'm I've sure. said my piece. But anyway... Let's. So I said Christian had a hot take. His take was that the maid is the Warhammer Titan, and it's fun. I like this take because she, she's like the one person who is in almost every shot when showing the family, but you don't really think of her as part of the family. Like they yeah. show the rest of the family, she's kind of in the background or she's putting out a plate. For all we know, she's actually like Willie's wife. Like yeah. that's just he. You know, he's so. Back in the old days, times where he has a wife, but he just makes her just cook food and just shut up and right. not say anything. And she could just be a maid, but the reason I'm I like it is I just want to see a titan that comes from somebody you would absolutely least expect, like a maid, or yep. like you said, one of the little little kids that were well, only five. I actually, on this rewatch, there's a kid that's a little bit older than the other kids, and mm-hmm. I think. It could possibly be that one, That's who you're going for? But I like Christian's take because that's... I feel like there's only three options here. I feel like there can be no one else besides either A, Willie, Mm -hmm. B, the kid that I was talking about that's probably like 11 years old, 12 years old, C, the maid, because there's no way that old fuck of a man who's like 100 years old is the Warhammer Titan. But why not? But what? I want an old man Titan so bad. So you think it could possibly be him? Why couldn't it not be? Because I've just never. I wouldn't expect a really old person. I feel like they would. Exact how exactly right? And how how would a Titan work if they were an old man? Like would it be like Aaron, where they have to put on the illusion of it, like their body ages, but yet their muscles and all that stuff, like they're regen, so they should. Be in perfect health, but maybe they slow well, themselves down, or they're they're like in great health. Well, they're in good health, but they still have an old body. You know what I mean? Right. So like, it you does... think their Titan would not be as strong because they're an older person as well? Well, see, that's what I wondered. Like, why that to me wouldn't make sense because you haven't reached like muscle maturity at age fifteen. So why would it not? Why would a Titan not always be like a twenty-five-year-old man or something like that? And so that's why well, I'm wondering. I think you know when Zeke, I feel like once, Zeke was like twenty-five in the beginning, he was a fucking monster. I just you feel like I mean? once you tighten up, I don't know how much it. Like you still have, um, like skills as far as they're like, oh, Annie still had her same exact fighting technique or whatever. But like once you transform into a titan why could you not use all that knowledge and still fight like a young man dear god annie was so terrifying (laughs) yeah she was epic but anyway we'll see we'll see what happens i would i ronnie wants to see an old man titan i'll leave it at that i want to see I, i mean i don't even care just surprise me with it all right hot take as in not hot at all pretty boring i don't want it to be willie how about that anybody with willie and i'm happy and I would say that's like the most unfun pick, but Willie, I also feel like, is 
such a deep character that I'd still be kind of okay with it. Anyway, so the calling card was so... It was so late in the episode, we usually switch right at the calling card, but it was so late that we had to, since we're doing more half-and-half covering of the episode, we just... It kind of slipped by, so I've got it here. It was about the Tiber family, which would have been real helpful if we had read on air. <laughs> it's a family of novel, no, not novels or novels. novels. It's not novels or novels. It's nobles, a family of nobles that revolted against Eldia in the Great Titan War a hundred years ago. They joined hands with the Marlian Empire or the Marlian hero Helos to overcome the Eldian Empire and bring an end to the war. As nobles who have long possessed the Warhammer Titan, they have guided Marley for many years and hold significant influence both domestically and abroad. Currently, well, actually, a little typo here says currently, currently, Willie wow. Tiber is the head of the family. This is a good segue. That's for a big what I was deep breath into the microphone. About Helos. Um, don't make it more than it is. Helos, what, what sorry. F- what was that? I think they say Halos, but I'll say Helos. Um, well, you didn't say Halos or Helos. You went Helos. Well, I'm saying it in like the Japanese accent. As many of you know, well, if you haven't been here since the beginning, I've got great uh, Japanese accents that I do from time to okay, time, especially so with Irwin. I guess we're going down this um, road longer than... And I will say, I miss saying... Uh, you know, Susume and things like that with Erwin. But maybe a character will come along where I can yell that in the mic later on. But uh, going back to the William Maggoth conversation about Helos, I was going to say that if a mere human apparently... Well, here, okay, here's what it is. You had asked me during last pod if the timeline matched up with the Amir and everything that happened. And I said yes, but it does not. Because Willie says that a hundred years ago, Helos defeated the devil of all earth. And if we go back to the episode with Grisha, Grisha's dad actually told him that Ymir got her powers from the devil of all earth thousands of years ago. Right. So how is the devil of all earth still around a hundred years ago? But Ymir's power split into nine Titans thousands of years ago. So there's propaganda both ways the marley the mm. eldians the truth is still not really known okay um and i feel like willie knows the truth though i feel like he he's the only one that might actually know the complete truth maybe even magath the way he reacts to okay but uh i was gonna say helos is probably an ackerman if he's a mere human that could destroy a, a titan and this may be leading us to the tibers were eldians that joined hands with an ackerman Maybe this is leading us to an Eldian, Aaron, joining hands with Ackermans, Mikasa. Don't like it. Levi, and they save everyone. Right. So it's like another cycle. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I, I didn't think about that. Um, so yeah, the- Aaron, Aaron, Mikasa, and Levi are going to save all of Paradise. And who would have seen that coming? <laughs> <laughs> Who saw the main characters potentially <laughs> saving the day? Well, I'm just you know, this this whole thing is just about repeating itself, right. the cycles. Yeah. So it's another. Well, no, re- the, you've got meaning behind it. You've yeah. got a reason or how they would do it. It's not just. But I just. Had but to then laugh. again, who in the fuck is the devil of all earth that they would repeat the cycle against? I don't. That whole what, listening to Willie and Mag's conversation again, the whole timeline does not add up. Like I, I want to know the definitive truth, and I want backstory. On Ymir Fritz herself, and I hope we get that sometime in this show. Yeah, and so then also in their first conversation, I gathered something new based off just the rewatches and stuff. Magath makes a comment and says, If someone controlled Marley from the shadows, he'd tell them it's already too late. And so this is basically when, uh, this is basically Magath subtweeting Willie. Except Willie knows it and is just like, yo, at me next time, bro. And uh, that was cool because Willie, I thought Willie would kind of get pissed off by that, but he didn't really seem that bothered by it. No, he he almost seemed to like 
be like, oh, wow, this Magath guy is more clever than I would have anticipated. Yeah. And Catherine, she helped make this super clear because she had a good example. It's just like on Paradise, or the Island Paradise, where the Rice family was in control, but they had King Fritz as the decoy. The Tyrers are in charge over here in Marley. We just don't necessarily know who the King Fritz of the operation the, is. Talking about the decoy? We right. don't know who the decoy is? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, it's that's like... Good, that's a good question. Also, for the most part, it doesn't seem like the Tibers interfere a whole lot, but that they have that power if they need to flex it. They just don't really... I mean, Willie straight up says, he's like, like, listen, my family helped save the day, but this path of warmongering was something Marley chose on their own. Yeah, it's like he gave them like the free will to do any of that, and that's kind of what they chose to do, which is... You know, fucked up. I want to know, like you said, though, who the decoy is that chose that for Marley. Yeah, and it makes me wonder if it's a king or if it's more of a democracy where there's like a whole group of people. Like a congress. Making these calls. Um, And uh, Willie also says that we gave Marley both freedom and power in hope of atonement. And I get was the atonement just for them having Eldian blood? I, I didn't really understand. Like, why would they? They clearly had some serious power if they were the ones that basically saved the day. So I'm just wondering. I can't think of what else they would need to be atoned for. I don't. Um... An atonement, and then at the end of that, they still remain in control. Yeah, and. I guess, too, the only reason they still may, remain in control is because they have the Warhammer Titan. Like, if they didn't have the Warhammer Titan, would they would they have already been overthrown by now? Like, is that another big part of it? Yeah, I don't know. I did have this, too, that I kind of forgot to mention. Um, the Ackermans. Are they Marley people? You know how Kenny, Yuri could not erase Kenny's memories... Are they pe- Marley people that, that fled with those Eldians and the Rice family to Island Paradise? And so they're actually technically Marleyans, and that's why the king uh, persecuted them, is because they're not even Eldians. They were Marleyans, and the king hated Marley, fled to that island to get away from the Marleyans. And that's... Yeah. Well, but the Ackermans... So you're saying they have no Eldian blood whatsoever? Maybe. because Well, I don't think they've really said, but the fact that he couldn't erase their memories is, to me, pretty interesting, as in they might not have Eldian blood whatsoever. So like maybe even if they were injected, they wouldn't even turn into a Titan. That's interesting, yeah. Huh. Okay. But, so then back to the whole Willy thing, he says, in the end... Eldia and Marley were thrown into darkness, and the Tibers are responsible for that. And so this one was also kind of confusing. Is he saying that because they had the power to try and bring peace this pa- these past 100 years, and they just never did? Is that what you think, or that that's the only thing I can think of? Yeah. I, it's just so ominous, and so I don't... Willie is an interesting lad. Yeah. So then it should also be mentioned that at the end of the scene, we see Willie offer a handshake, and it cuts before we see what Magath decides to do. And I think the first few times through, I felt like Magath wasn't buying into Willie's bullshit, but I think due to the later scene, I was mistaken, and I think he did buy into it and shook his hand, even though... So that was also another thing where like a rewatch helps, because I feel like you go through that entire scene, you're like, Magath isn't you know he's not falling for this shit he knows more of what's going on than we think but i also think that he it it just goes to something to say about marley as a whole and how maggoth still might not be completely on board with willie but he thinks it's better than what they're doing in marley okay and so that next scene like i was talking about this is the whole large-scale demolition being required and Magus saying it has decayed beyond repair. And something about this makes Willie give control of the military to Magus. Do you have any thoughts on this? 
I think the house is the military itself that Magath is talking about. And there's some rats in it that maybe you're trying to go against. I don't know if Marley itself or they're becoming... I guess, yeah, I get, there's some rats in there that are going against Marley. They don't want to continue doing what Marley's doing and... Willie's like, you can handle it if you know what's going on. Okay. Yeah, and so that, I mean, that leads into Magath initially saying, no, Willie's the supreme commander of Marley. He controls the military. And that's when Willie says all this wheel stuff about how he doesn't want it. He was chosen for it. It's a very heavy wheel, apparently. We don't see this wheel, but it's super heavy. None of his predecessors won in the wheel. He wishes he could let go, but a time has come when he must not... Rewatches any thoughts on all yeah, this? So rewatch right here made me think he's one hundred percent not the Warhammer Titan. He because there's no way they would let him lead this whole Tiber thing and only have thirteen years to live. Like I feel like he's the front man, so they're gonna give him the long life. Yeah, he can handle things on his own. And what he's talking, the wheel is just being ahead of the all of Marley, pretty much. And that's that's a good point. And I'm not even saying, I don't even know which side I'm on, right? I feel like the way he's, this is such a stupid thing, but the way, the words he uses and the way he's like looking at his hands, like he's got, I just feel like if you look at your hands, you have power. That's what, how Ronnie's mind works. No one ever looks at their hands unless they have some sort of power. Yeah. Never once have you gone through your day, you just like look at your hands like, oh shit, what have I done? <laughs> Which he uh, might, he still might be the Warhammer Titan. I just feel like that would almost be right. too obvious. It would be too, it would kind of be too obvious, but my argument for it, like you were saying, like, if he was the Warhammer Titan, he only has 13 years, someone eats him, they have all his memories, like they wouldn't, I yeah, guess they would have their own decision making, so maybe they wouldn't be as wise as him, but they would have all the info to make the yeah. same decision as him. Because it would take a while before they actually like relive his memory. It's kind of like Aaron. It took Aaron multiple years, and not until he read Grisha's books did he really actually relive Grisha's memories. Yeah. But, and if you look around, though, like who would take the wheel from him in the Tiber family? Like we said, there's like a maid, an old guy that looks like he's about to die, a nun that looks like she's close to dying, and then a few kids. It's like he's got to stay alive. Like... Yeah, all interesting. So then we get into this house talk again. The house was in danger of collapsing, but some pillars remain usable. According to them, it is already infested with rats. Who is them? Oh, oh. Who is them? That I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know either. Like, like, who are they? And then what is the house and who are the rats? So this is where we have... Zeke. We have all kind of different like options. My main thoughts initially consisted of what I mentioned in the last episode, where it was the whole council of people at the dinner party that are acting as if they are all for this peace treaty with Marley, but are not. Uh, I think your first mention was it was like Aaron's gang being the rats, and maybe they already knew Marley was infested with them. But I think at this point we've kind of we don't think that's no. Uh, just wanted to mention everything, and then you just mentioned the military, so it could be the military. And then upon rewatch, the only thing I can think of is just leaders of Marley as a whole, who are the like. There's the ones who want to keep them in war, and then maybe there's the ones more like Magath, who recognize the Tibers are in control while, and you know, don't want to be taking over all this land while the others are still just like fuck the tibers they don't do shit we are in power yeah so or yeah Zeek. So what did you just you got some phlegm in your throat what Zeek. 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 Zeek yega nah dude i wanted to talk about this upon rewatch with my roommate some interesting stuff with i think our boy Zeke. Okay. The baseball glove scene, Aaron and Falco. Okay. Aaron says he's been sending letters to people, to his family, and that his family sent him a baseball glove and a baseball. 
Who is the only person in this entire goddamn show that's ever even referenced baseball? Right. Zeke. I think Aaron has somehow been talking to Zeke. Okay. I did not think this the first time watching it. I just thought why like I thought it was really weird. I was like that's weird he got that. But watching it again like talking to my dumbass roommate. I was trying to explain things to him that I don't even understand. Yeah. And then I was like, dude, he's been fucking talking to Zeke. Who else would it be? No one else knows baseball. Or I guess people do, but no one's ever said anything about it. Right. No, that makes a lot of sense because we, I mean, we completely talked about how little sense it meant for someone to send a baseball glove to Aaron who would be in the hospital. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it, so in your theory, Aaron knows he's talking to Zeke, right? Yeah, I mean, Aaron knows at this point, reliving his dad, his dad's memories, that he has a brother. Okay. One, two, the Beast Titan coming up. I'm sure when he said, "You're nothing like your father," and saying all that to him, he he's probably caught on by now that that's his brother, is the Beast Titan. Right. Well, actually, and he's infiltrated, so I'm sure he's heard Zeke Yeager is like the war chief of if I... yeah. Aaron was sitting right there when Zeke went up and hugged his grandparents. So Yeah, he was. That's another thing, too. And maybe even Zeke goes to visit, like you said, you think his grandpa's a patient at the mental hospital. Maybe Zeke goes and visits, and Aaron's fucking there, too. So he might have even talked to him at the hospital, okay. for all we know. There's so many, like, so many ways for him to get in touch with him. There are. Just why the <laughs> fuck would he send him a baseball glove? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He was like... <laughs> Poor lad, he doesn't have a leg or anything. He's so bored. I'll give him a baseball glove so he can just play catch with himself. Um, <laughs> so you mentioned your roommate. Do you want to have a enthralling oh, a... Uh, segment of yes, Chad's dumbass roommate? So after getting a few emails, you know, people trying to explain the whole Willie Maggot thing to us, I I felt like I got a pretty pretty good grasp on it. And uh, my roommate, <laughs> I'm watching it with him. And we all know how stupid he is. God, he's just so Shout dumb. Shout out. Hopefully he's listening to this. And um, I was explaining something about Willie and Magath. You know, I was like, and remember when they talked about this and he goes, who's Magath? <laughs> Who's been in all four episodes of this season thus Who far. Who they have called Magath multiple times. Oh, that guy's Man, like, this guy is just, guy's lay off idiot. the weed. <laughs> And that concludes another segment of Chaz's roommate is a dumbass. So then I have just a few things at the dinner party. And this is where, at this point in the episode, I might be back to analyzing way too deep into things, but I'm just going with it. That's what this episode's for. Just No, dude, this show, you, you either analyze something way too deep and it means nothing, or you underanalyze it and it just means it's like the entire show. It's the entire clue of the show. All right. It's annoying. So we haven't talked about the potential importance of this whole festival uh, Willie's having being in Liberia. Liberia, yeah. It's almost as if Willie is embracing his Eldian heritage slash blood. I mean, he straight up comes out, right? He talks about how he has the devil blood running through him. He mentions how Marley was oppressed more than anyone, but now it uses Eldians to press other nations or oppress other nations and repeat the tragedy. It's almost like he's saying Marley has forgotten where they come from. Yep. Uh, he understands the want to exterminate all the Eldians, but he has arrived at a single solution that will answer this endless problem. The more I listen to that line, the more it's like, what the fuck? What What do you think that exactly means? I, so here's the thing. I, I still don't know how much I trust Willie. He just seems like he's meant to be a shady bad guy. But when I go back and watch it a few more times, it almost seems like he could be the poster boy for Eldians not being as bad as some of these people think. And Well, do you think when you say that, though, do you mean Eldians... In Marley, not Eldians on Paradise. I well, feel like he's going to try to say that the yeah, Eldians that are on Marley are good, right. but the other ones are still bad. Yeah, because that's so... I've got something about that here okay. in a second. It seems like a big deal to just have all these high and mighty people just strolling into an internment zone and enjoy a festival with what they consider devils. 
Yeah. And obviously we saw the Eldians were able to just participate. <laughs> like Yeah, and then you see we see the see guy Falco shove his ice cream in Gabby's mouth and you're like, Oh, that's so cute. They are nice people. <laughs> great <laughs> They're hey, not devils. Great note, great note. No, but like at the dinner party they're talking about how they're letting filthy devils touch the plates and now they're gonna go share a corn dog with them. Yeah. They're gonna go sit next to him in the the theater to watch Willie's one man show. Um but no, it, because the other thing about all these rich people, or I guess I call them rich, they're yeah. powerful people, might be. They better. are. They're powerful and rich, I'm assuming. Um, Catherine had brought up another good point about why other countries hate Eldians even more than Marlians, and it's because Eldians are on the front lines and being forced to kill people from these other countries. So all these other countries are seeing that these Eldians are real dicks for ki- killing all their people, but... I mean, some of the things Willie is saying just comes off as real negative about Marley and how they're running things. And, like, if he can tell them, hey, it's not the Eldians, like, Marley's forcing them to do this, we just have a serious civil fucking war on our hands. Yeah. Um, And then it's like, that's when it's like what you said. How do the people of Paradise fit into all this? He's got to he's got to just say that these devil bloods on this land are good. The ones on that island are very bad. That's what I think he's essentially gonna, gonna say to persuade these other world leaders because these are just I mean it's like the world nowadays. We go you know to war, U.S. whatever country goes to war with other countries, but then you know a couple years later they're sending ambassadors to all these high up meetings to meet and talk and be all friendly and shit. Right. They're just posers. Like So what does that mean for Marley? In your in your mind, what does that mean for Marley? He's 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 gathering all these world leaders to be on Marley's side. Now they are all allies because you know, they were just enemies fighting. He's going to say, "We're all allies now. I secretly run this." He might even come out and say that straight up. He might be completely truthful and he's like, "We need to go exterminate paradise and we can share this world together so you think even though willie is showing some signs of like hate towards marley and how it's ran he's doesn't really care about that he's just gonna fo- he's gonna come bring them all together convince marley to appreciate the audience who have stuck around and just yeah. worry about paradise and he might say this is the final war like say like no more wars after this once we do this we won't have to worry about any more because he said the, the one single solution to the, an endless problem. So that might be what he says. This will end all problems if we do this. Which, you know, that's not really what's going to happen, even if they do that. But All right. Yeah, that's just a guess, dude, because he no, can say anything. It's all up in the air, and I don't... That's where I don't... I don't know what happens. No. Like Anything could fucking happen. Willie I'm so excited. Willie obviously has a whole lot of power amongst all these people and all these other countries... And it just seems like he's more on board with at least the Eldians that are on Marley. So what that means for Marley and Aaron's group of Eldians, I don't know. Because let me ask you this. Is Aaron, in his mind right now, are is he only fighting for the Eldians and just the people of Paradise? Or is he thinking, no, we're saving Eldians as a whole, like... I think maybe just his his buddies on the island because maybe even Fal- just Falco. I don't know, though. I don't know if he's going to talk to Reiner to maybe even forgive Reiner right here. Or what do you think? Do you think he's going to forgive Reiner or does he have bad blood with Reiner still? I... In my own head, I feel like he's trying to convince... I think Aaron and them want to save Eldians as a whole. I think they want to take down Marley, even though the other Eldians have been the ones calling the ones on the islands traitors and even more devils. I My initial thinking is that Aaron's saying, hey, join me. Let's take down Marley. You guys don't have to live in these internment zones anymore. You don't have to wear those stupid armbands. Okay. That's my thought. I like that. I also think too, okay, do you think if people 
if Eldians say no, do you think he'll care about them? Would he hesitate to kill a non-fellow patriot? I think it depends on the... Because uh... he, Aaron is, like we said at the end of Season 3, but, he is completely different now. Yeah, I mean, if, I think if there are other Eldians fighting him and shooting cannons, I don't think he's going to hesitate to f- fuck shit up. Okay. But do I think he's going to, in the middle of a war... You know, tighten out, drop into an internment zone, and just fucking murder a bunch of little kids and families. That no, I don't think so. No, that's a good point too because that's another. It's kind of a bad thing for Aaron that it's in this intern. Well, it's a good and bad thing. Bad thing, there's a lot of innocent civilians that are Eldians around. So if he did try something, he would more than likely kill a bunch of Eldians. But it is a good thing that it's in there because how would he get out of this internment zone? <laughs> If it the festival was in Mar this downtown Marley, so what I'm hoping for next episode is I don't even I hope we don't even go back to Aaron and Reiner I hope it's 22 minutes of just Willie's one man show. Oh, dude. How yes. awesome would that be? We're just in the audience he's, just watching. He's the show. just got like a top hat and one of those like canes. Yeah. Oh my god, that'd be so just he a one off dancing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm really hoping for. So okay, but let's go back to Zeke though. If okay. that really is Zeke sending him the baseball glove, what is Zeke's goal in this whole thing? We know Zeke acted sketchy from day one with the whole in the room thing, and you know Reiner even kind of caught note of that when Marley was spying on them, wiretapping them. What is, what would be Zeke's goal at all in this? To bring Aaron on board. I think you think Zeke is going to team up with Aaron because he was no, literally I, just slaughtering Aaron's no, people. No, bring Aaron on board, like with him, not join Aaron. I think he would be trying to get Aaron to join his side to be a part of Marley. So because Zeke, to me, Zeke is just like unless I don't know, I don't know what you have to do or show Zeke to change his mind at this point. He's been essentially like brainwashed since he was a kid to be on this side and he obviously hates his father's guts and i don't know at this point what aaron could tell him about his father to make him think otherwise and but do you really think that marley would buy like when he in episode midnight sun when he goes sees aaron and he says i'm coming back to save you is he is he really going to to save Aaron in that moment was he thinking I'm gonna come back save you take you back to Marley and we'll destroy everyone with you being the founding titan do you think he really thought that and that Marley would just buy into that no I think it's I think it's like Ymir where it's like oh yeah let's take you back here and then so someone else can eat you and we can so you don't think he actually even cares about Aaron? why would he give a shit about Aaron but if he's secretly sending these messages to Aaron why wouldn't he just you know turn him in to Magath and then be like, hey, we got a traitor right here. Because then you have to fight Aaron. But they could take him down. If it's just Aaron, they could easily take him down at this moment. I know, but he doesn't. If, if he knows that Aaron is on this island, he saw all Aaron's. He knows they have the other Titans. For all he knows, oh, if Aaron got on this, who knows about all his other friends? Are they on here too? That's true. Dude, it's so complicated. <laughs> what the fuck is going to happen? Like, So, yeah, I don't know. Because Aaron, Aaron is essentially, if he really is the only one in this internment zone at this time, he doesn't stand a chance against everyone. Like if Reiner goes armor, the Jaw, Zeke, Warhammer, if but it's we, all of them versus Aaron, but I no feel chance. I feel like them showing us John earlier, or what we still think is John, is telling us no. That he was sending like, those le- letters saying, come to this festival and fight with me? Or? Well, that was my initial take, okay. was that he was sending... But I am I just mean on the grand scale of, no, Aaron and Jean are not the only ones on in Marley. Because, like, Aaron's obviously the one deepest into it, but... Okay. And then one more thing I want to talk about, Historia. If she is... She is essentially the last royal left besides Zeke. Mm-hmm. Does Aaron risk actually bringing Historia to Marley, or is she back on Paradise? 
Yeah, that I don't know. To me, if I had to guess, I would say she's back on Paradise right now because uh, we don't know how much Aaron's changed, but the last thought that Aaron had had on Historia was, I can't say anything because what would they do to her? Okay. And while I think he's changed a lot, I don't think he's changed in that way. Okay. Yet. Because we know the last time he touched her, he got those, you know, he relived those memories of his dad confronting Frida. Yeah. Um, so I feel like, I mean, he could just essentially be licking all over and just like having like memory I mean, orgasms. Really weird, uh, <laughs> I mean, really weird not? way to phrase that. Just imagine he's just been like licking well, I'm her not, this entire I'm not sure. past Lick, three years. I'm not sure licking her would be the most effective way to go about it, but. Well, I'm sure he's done a lot of things to get <laughs> Can we, what about orgasms. this? Can we just, uh. Can we just get a little vial of her blood? Can she give some blood? And he just wears around, wears it around oh, him like dude. a necklace. <laughs> Bro, what if he's been doing that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, he just drinks it every now and then. <laughs> he's a vampire. <laughs> That'd be so awesome. You guys are not ready for this season. Aaron turns oh into my. a vampire. Dude, that is a. You just brought up an awesome take. What if he has like, like you said, some blood? Yeah. And right when he, he like gets Reiner to help fight but Reiner goes against him and starts fighting him so he just he's able to use the founding titan right there cuz he has that and he just fucks everyone up founding titan style yeah i mean that's a that really oversimplifies everything but why would it not be that way if he was able to control it just by his fist meeting Dinah's palm like <laughs> like it seems yeah. like you don't seems like you don't have to do too much to make things work you just have to yeah and well, Reiner's not gonna go. Arm- He's not gonna go Titan mode right here. Aaron played this. No, smart I don't. Yeah, cause... I don't think anyone's going Titan mode at this moment. I think it's especially with Falco being in that basement with him. They would instantly kill Falco. I feel like. Yeah. So yeah, any other thoughts on the Tibers? No, I think we got it. All right, we've been talking a lot of Attack on Titan. Let's take a quick little break. How was your New Year's? Any fun stories? You sound like you got pretty drunk. <sighs> well, I was hungover as. F- Fuck on New Year's Eve. I mean, that's such a Chad move. <laughs> well, they don't call me Chad for nothing. No, they don't. That's what my mama named me at birth. So uh, what, you had like three Trulies? Three hard seltzers? I had three Trulies and one shot of vodka, so yeah. Whoa, chill out. <laughs> but no, New Year's Eve Eve, as I like to call it, I went to a cabin. Right. Um with no service or anything, it kind of sucked. I wanted to send you some snaps. I had some pretty good, interesting stuff going on. But essentially, the guy's cabin that I went to, he has a big creek in his backyard, which you wouldn't be able to do nowadays uh, for infrastructure reasons. Okay. But uh, we all got butt-ass naked and <laughs> hopped in the creek at 2 a.m. All right. It's pretty awesome, and we got pictures. and Of you being butt-ass dip, naked? Dipping our testicles in the... 20 degree water there's pictures of that huh? there is yes there's videos and pictures if anybody wants that you can email us at the podcast chronicles at gmail.com we now, probably will not send those but and weren't you were you not the only single person out of three uh there were three <laughs> married couples and then you that's how i understood no, there it. was a there was two married couples okay and there was a few few single people and then one couple that I don't know if they're kind of swingers or not. Okay. <laughs> yep. Sounds like you're kind of farty. So <laughs> So how many single females were we dealing with at this thing that you were dipping your testicles into the creek? <laughs> Approximately negative two. No. <laughs> <laughs> there was one or two and they were inside for the occasion. They uh, they did not want to participate in dipping dip, their testicles. Yeah, in they the did not want water. any testicles in the water. Um, how many how many pairs of testicles were in the twenty degree water? If okay, you don't let's mind see. me asking. Two, four, six, eight, nine. There was about nine testicles in there. One of them. Okay, yeah, there's a guy. With, yeah, Randy yeah, does have that. Randy's. Porn. Yeah, bless him. All right, he got hung by a bull in a bull riding accident. But, okay, but yeah, and it no was cool. no women in the water. No women got in the water. It was just a bunch of dudes. And then we took a picture hey. on his bridge. He has a bridge. And yeah. we were all just, you know, butt naked. Right. Our balls all shriveled up. And Yeah, you'll have to show me that after the podcast. Okay. I'm very interested. All right. Um, I, uh, you know how Ronnie rolls. Fuck New Year's. Um, it's just, I stay up till midnight every night. What am I doing? Um, very, oh, yeah. very unhealthy. You know what I'm sick of? Chocolate. You eat no, a lot no, no, of no. 
Well, I do love chocolate. Is there anything more boring than a video of fireworks? <laughs> Snapchat <laughs> Na- stories? Snapchat, Instagram stories, you know, Twitter posts. Tell me one thing that's more boring than someone videoing fireworks. Someone taking a picture of the sunset. See? Is it close for to some, it? It's close, but for some okay. reason I like that a little bit more. Okay, but it's close. Be, and I guess maybe close. maybe it's because the sunsets I see, they're sprinkled around, you know? And I do, uh, here's the thing about Ronnie, I do like a good sunset. I don't give a shit about your fireworks, just quite frankly. And here's the other thing. Um, no one ever just posts one video of fireworks. If it's a Snapchat, yeah, it's, there's never one 10-second video of, oh, here's the fireworks. It's at least 40. Whereas a sunset, it's like, oh, here's the sunset, that's it. It's a good, I look at the top of the Instagram stories, and it's 20 dashes long. I'm like, really? You videoed the entire fireworks show? I'm not going to watch the entire 10 seconds of one, much less the full three-minute production you've put on here. Well, aren't you scared of fireworks? Is this well, what they, listen, at? they are pretty loud, which so even goes against my or even goes for my point even more. If I was going to watch fireworks, I would do it either in a car or through a video. That's a great point. Um, and I still don't do it. I don't even shoot fire. We didn't shoot any fireworks off at the New Year's Eve Eve party. Um, yeah, we just dipped testicles. But I agree, dude. I didn't get to see any it's, firework it's videos firework. because you didn't, we have oh, no yeah, service. Right. Yeah. Um, but the next day... You didn't miss anything. Did you stay up for New Year's Eve? Uh, yeah, I was, I was up. I fell asleep at 11.30. Okay. I couldn't make it. I was you know, still hungover. I drank. We went to a brewery, uh, me and my cousins, parents... I drank a few beers and, you know, I was so messed up from the night before dipping testicles right. and swimming in 20 degree water that I fell asleep before the ball dropped. Yeah, no I, intended. but here's the thing. I was up for it, but I did not. I was not watching one of those bullshit New Year's shows. What? Um, no, I hate those. They didn't those. have Robin Thicke playing? So, yes, you brought up my <laughs> favorite New Year's story ever. A great story. Back in... So this is, we got to 2021 this time. Happy 2021, everyone. For New Year's going into 2019, I went over to a friend's house and we watched whatever stupid channel that is that they're in New York and Ryan Seacrest is really being a dick. And they're He's, like... Yeah, they're taller like, than you. Yeah, they're, like five, five. they're videoing everyone like kissing, um, which is just really super fun. And they're out in the streets and thinking, you know... Oh, to one more hour. And so anyway, this is like supposedly they're, they're in Times diapers. Square. Dude, have you heard that? They wear diapers to piss themselves. Oh, yeah, I've because, heard those lunatics. Yeah. I don't even know what they did this year. I saw a preview where it was like Ryan Seacrest live from New York. And then they showed like all those other six dickheads who are usually like out in the streets in 15 degree weather, people shitting their pants and they're asking yeah. questions. And they were part of the broadcast show. I'm like, what? That Corey V bitch still has the world by the balls. What are we going to do? Like, I didn't watch it, but I assume they didn't have 500,000 people in the streets of New York groping each other. It's a great point, Ronnie. I um, didn't even think about that till now because I was too busy dipping my testicles right. in water. And good for you. That was way better use of your time than watching one of those bullshit programs. I hate them. But anyway, going into 2019, keep in mind, this is tired. Ty- what is it called? Times, yeah, Times Square, New okay. York. Five minutes before we reach 2000, 2019. And the best, I'm like, okay, we've got one more musical performance. Who could it possibly be? The best they could do was Robin Thicke performing Blurred Lines. <laughs> <laughs> Which... Might I say, let me look this up real quick. I couldn't couldn't believe it because that song was popular when I was a sophomore in high school and I hated it. Uh, yeah, that song was released in 2013. Yeah, Robin! And, <laughs> and that was the last song. I. It might have even been going into 2020. I can't remember now. Do you remember? It was going into the year 2019. It was so 2019? It was the last song of 2018, yep. That was the last song I heard in 2018. Yeah, and I had the worst 2019 because of that. God. I didn't even listen to music 
all of 2019. Fuck that song is all I have to say. I just what a. Can you imagine watching that and being like, oh wow, that Robin Thicke performance is really impressive. Show me some fucking Pitbull or get yeah. off the screen. We should have had Ninja's Fortnite stream going at oh that time. Oh my god. <laughs> so anyway, now we can get back into uh, into Attack on Titan. What do you say? So Let's get back into Hanji's sexy ass. Yeah, and, let's uh, go ahead and Ilse's dive. No- let's, notebook. let's tackle our first OVA in Ilsei's notebook. Um, I don't know how you did this. Did you... I, I did very broad outlines. So I did could, as well. Okay, so we can just roll with that, and if you have something to add or I have something to add, we can just hop in, okay? Okay. So it was the 49th Expedition, which was, I'm glad they said that, because obviously we had the 57th, so still just a little earlier on. This was, at the end of the episode, they did say, too, this is you know one of the first ones right after uh, Wall... Mm. Maria fell. So this okay. is, you know, not long after. Hanji wants to capture a Titan, but Levi's not having it. Um, she's asking him for help, and he's like, he knows what she's asking at this point. So she's it, been on this train for a while. And does he make a toilet or shit joke at any moment? Oh, yeah. Okay. It was very early on. Hey, what the fuck are you doing? Did you not ever chewed some dead skin off someone, your weapons? Someone probably heard that because it's right there in the microphone. I just looked as if, or looked up as Chad was spitting onto the floor. Not spitting. I chewed some dead skin off my lip. And, and then what, what did, you, did you do? Well, do you call it spit if no spit comes out? No. Well, what? so that was in your mouth. What did you do? Blew it. I blew you, it out. You blew it out really of your mouth? Hard. Yeah, it's not the only thing you blew this past weekend. So wow. they set up camp, and Hanji asks Erwin if she can capture a Titan. But Erwin says, listen, Hanji, we already lost 10 men, and we can't do something that dangerous. We don't have the people to Irwin's spare. Erwin's like, look, I don't like losing men. I've never lost men before. We're not doing it. <laughs> That's enough. We have not properly stopped and just celebrated seeing these characters, oh, including Erwin. A- just a, how do you say this, fresh of breath air. Yes. Love these freshes of breath air that I get when I see my, my beloved uh, characters on screen. We get Erwin, we get Hanji. I'm just going to go through a list right now. Oreo, Petra. Yep. If you haven't uh, listened to our old podcast, that's our nickname for, what was his name? Or, ore. O, Oruo. Ore. Or, Oreo. Or, Oreo. Or, we call him just Oreo. Yeah. Um, El, they mentioned um, Elda. Which is the wizard that you liked to refer to him as? Uh, Elda? Eldjin? Yeah, Eldjin. The wizard Eldjin. I don't know go... why. Why the fuck did I say Elda? Because you're always <laughs> trying to say these things in Japanese, even though you don't speak a lick of it. Okay, you, well. You can say Arigato and. And Shinzo Sasageo, which you get wrong. Shinzo Sasageo. Even though you get both of those wrong, like every other time you do it, but yeah, his name was the Wizard Eld Jin. Put some Baca. respect on his name. Wish I would have seen Ibaka. That's what you are, Baka. Uh, so Hanji, she chokes out double stuffed Oreo while comparing him. Uh, I'd let her choke my double stuffed Oreo. <laughs> she says that. He, there's no way he could beat Levi, but if he tried, he would need to analyze Levi. To beat him, and yeah, that watch is what the way she's... he shits. Watch mm-hmm. the way he she mentioned everything, a bunch of things, yeah. everything about him, and that's what we need to do with the Titans. And I see where she's coming yeah. from. I would love to know how Levi shits. Like if it's pretty big, or if it's just normal. If it, you know, if it's easy on him, I'd love to know. Yamike, he's here as well with his super sniffer. Um, this yeah. guy had one of the most peaceful deaths of all time. So <laughs> that was a great callback, though, for him sniffing. Like I liked. How he was the first one to sniff out the Titan in the forest, you know? Yeah. Some good Mikkei action, because the last time we saw him, he was getting ripped to shreds. He's really relaxing in the afterlife. And he notices a Titan, and Hanji just rushes off for it against, or through Levi's dismay. Yeah. Levi, he just crazy did a face. Han- this is this is throwback to season one, crazy Hanji. Oh, she, yeah. You know, she's calmed down a little bit. She's still a little crazy, but 
she was wild. Back right. Then. This is when I didn't know what to make of her. Um, I, yeah, Levi makes the face where if I had to caption it, it would just say, is this bitch for real? Yo, how about when she chokes Oreo? Yeah. Oh, man, dude. That just, all the blood I, in my body rushed inside my pants. Thank God we did not watch this together because I thought there might be a few of those moments. So Hanji, she leads this thing on a wild goose chase until it just stops in its tracks, turns around, and starts running in the complete opposite direction. And so now rolls re- reversed. Hanji starts to chase it. And the Titan reaches a tree. And all of a sudden, this guy thinks it's a woodpecker. Just starts banging its forehead I against know. the tree. I saw your mom doing this on the way in. I had to run grab her and say, why are you doing that? She told me it was because you told her to. Well, I didn't they, I didn't tell her to do that. I just why said, was she chained to a tree, Chaz? Okay. She wasn't chained to a tree. I said you're allowed to move free. Well, okay, she was chained to a tree, but she had like, it was a 20-foot chain. So it was she the had length, a lot of room to move around. It was the length of a junior jump rope. Okay, that's a lie. I know that's a lie, dude, because, well, it's not junior to you because you're so short, but yes, maybe it was a junior then. Well, to let's me, be honest, since I'm so tall, yeah. I haven't right. been able to jump rope in many years. It's the, it's the jumping part I have yeah. the hardest time with. But you need to stop saying stuff about my mom, man. People are going to think that I'm bad to my mom. Yeah, you're definitely not bad to your mom. Hanji dances with it for a little while because she's just zooming all around it. And then Oreo went in for the kill because Hanji was trying to capture this thing. Oreo, stupid Oreo. And Hanji yells at him, for make, and which makes him stop in his tracks. And he almost loses his life to this Titan until Captain Levi Captain saves Levi. the day. Saving the day like always. Hanji, she's obviously upset, but Levi's still not having it. He's so through with this bitch, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. He says, don't put his squad in danger. And it's interesting to see like the evolution of the characters because <laughs> I think Hanji is getting on Levi's nerves so much at this point. Like We saw late in season three when he was saying like he was vouching for Hanji being the next in line. She was going to be the commander once Erwin's done. He's not of that mindset right now, yeah. I don't think. So, Petra, she notices a body inside a tree, and it's the body of Ilse. Ilse. <laughs> right? Ilse. And Levi finds a notebook. We get to the calling card, which is just the life of a titan. It's pretty much everything that we know. Yeah. If you're listening to this, you know it. But anyway, Ilse was a member of the... 34th expedition in the scouts her squad was overtaken by titans and so she uh, makes a record of her struggles in the notebook as she's running away from the same titan hanji was just playing with she has no you know 3d gear or anything nope so she's just trying to avoid these things on foot until she has a run-in with this titan she gets into a little her scuffle with it as she lands and her back's on a tree. She's freaking out when goddamn this Titan just says, Ymir's people, Ymir sans, welcome. And then it fucking bows. And it bows to her, dude. And then I've got, I did some extensive research here, Ronnie. I feel very proud of myself after, you know, deciphering the Japanese comments on this lay, YouTube video. Lay it on me, baby. There happened to be one English comment, and uh, I figured out what the Titan was actually meaning and who the Titan thought she was. Do you want me to say that now, or do you want to finish this little thing on I it? want you to put it wherever you I'll feel put like it you on want to. I'll do it right now. All right. So, apparently, this is one of the people... That was pushed off the edge with Ymir in season two. Okay. You know how she was the fake queen, Ymir the queen? Sure do. Okay, this person was pushed off right before Ymir was injected and pushed off. And he saw Ilse, and she does kind of look similar to Ymir. So he thought, well, it's actually a a she-titan. The titan thought that it was Ymir from season This is a woman titan? This is a woman titan. I thought that was really interesting to say. You. Where'd you find that? Um, it was in the comments, so I went back, you know, because I'm just such a 
extensive right. smart guy. I went back well, to I'm such two. an extensive researcher that, I mean, you might be right, but it is great that you source YouTube comments as your uh, as your studies. Well, it made sense because when I went back to season two, episode ten, People I believe. People were saying. <laughs> season two, episode ten, you see the person get pushed off, turn into a titan, and then, you know, it just all lines up. It's pretty awesome. All right. And it was a woman. It was a woman, which is nutty. All right. Did not have nearly as good of an ass as Annie did. I'll just say that right now. Yeah, Annie's got a dumpy on her. And so she starts aggressively questioning this Titan in a way that I would not have suggested. Yeah, I would have been like, yes, I'm Ymir, bow to me. And then slowly like snuck off. She gets so intense up to the point that this Titan pulls its cheeks off. And then runs after Ilse and bites her head off as she continues riding. This is a pretty, this is a pretty scary scene. I I must say this this brought me back to like uh, the old days when I first saw Attack on Titan, and it made my body tingle with uh, terror. Can you everyone grab your cheek right now? Imagine ripping your cheek off. How would you even do it? So this Titan was trying so hard to not eat her, right? I couldn't get a, I can't get a good grab of my cheek to do it. It kind of slips off. And I got some chubby cheeks. Oh, yeah, you do. How do you not get a good grab of your cheek, bro? It makes up like four-eighths of your face. I know. Um, so was this Titan doing that because he didn't want to eat her? Or she didn't want to eat her? Yeah, I think so. Okay. This Well... This, this then raises a question, though. How do some Titans, they're abnormal ones. We've known about abnormal ones since the beginning of Season 1. How do some Titans kind of have more control over themselves than the other mindless ones? I wonder. I think it's just each Titan is, like, built differently. Built well, different. Because, I mean, honestly, like, we see some that just drop the entire person in their mouth we see others that just bite off the head we see others that bite half of them spit the other part out it's just like whatever the yeah. fuck they're feeling at that point if santa claus would have just bit aaron's head off this whole story wouldn't even have happened i know so take that for what you will but no that scene where she oh she's writing about the pressure on her skull that he's biting uh uh, yeah, I, that, it has hey. to be that it didn't want to eat her. Because even when it was in its mouth, it was like trying not to bite her all the way. I haven't had this take in a while. Are you ready for it? Okay. Owie. Hey, am I right? Owie? Owie. Ugh. And there's Ronnie's owie take of the day. So we then cut to Hanji, who just f- has finished reading this notebook. And then she writes a proposal to Erwin. And the... She mentions how the Titans stored her in a tree. So this just showed that they have a deeper level of thinking than we had, or I guess at that point they had initially thought. And then Haji returns Ilse's belongings to her parents, which is always just sad. It reminds me of like Petra's dad or whatever. Right, and it also reminds me of the time that uh, Commander Beloved Keith Sadie's returned an arm to a mother. Uh, I would say Hanji did a much better job. A, a journal, a notebook, rather. Wait. So much this... more appropriate thing to hand over to parents than a loose limb. She could have returned Ilse's decapitated body. And you know what? She decided against that. And for that, I I love her. I love well, her for you it. You know what? The goat, Keith, I thought that was a very cool move on him. He just keeps it real. If he's like, well, it doesn't belong to me. This arm belongs to the mother. This is who it's getting it for. And who knows what kind of weird shit uh, Hanji's doing with that corpse. Let's be honest. No wonder Hanji kind of had a thing for Keith. They're both weird like that, you know? She can make a photocopy of the notebook. and Or not a photocopy. I don't think they have laser jet printers in um, the Island of Paradise. But she could at least rewrite it. You can't rewrite a body, and she's got that in her laboratory somewhere. So then she walks out. Um, I'm trying to th- come up with a new fun way to say double stuffed Oreo. Uh, uh, mega stuffed Oreo is there. Fudge covered Oreo is there. He apologizes to Hanji, 
and she apologizes to him by choking him again. God, man, this episode. Just so many just <laughs> sexual tension. That Who just... needs porn when you can watch oh, Ilse's yeah. Notebook? Uh, perfect gap in between sessions. You could recuperate and then get ready for the... Oh, my God. Hey, are you my 59-year-old father? I'm sorry, man. I, this is my computer. It's not my... It's not my fucking phone or whatever. It's just my laptop. I've got so many notes and so many things that it's just... What What 20-year-old guy has... It's my laptop. Has their notification bell laptop. turned on? Who does that? Oh, laptop. Couldn't yeah. help but notice you didn't have your notebook again today. God, you're the worst. It'll say his notebook. This episode's going on too long. So then no, Levi not, tells Hanji that Erwin approved of her proposal, and eight days later, they captured a Titan without a single casualty. Sony and Bean, this is when that happens. It lines up perfect. So that's pretty cool. Because, okay, yeah, they captured Sony and Bean, and then she captures another one later on, right? Well, or I guess she captures Sony and then captures Bean later, like one or the other. Gets one of them first and get, gets the other one later. And then that's when in season one, like episode whatever, they have them already there. Because this is, this is essentially like, you know how after Wall, Rose fell or whatever, uh, five years pass? Or wait, no. I'm, I'm getting mixed up now. I, I'm not sure. Is, did you see a YouTube comment that said this was Sony and Bean? No, it just lines up perfect because they're saying right after the wall fell is when this went down and then they finally captured one. I think it even said at the end they captured two, so it's got to be Sony and B. I'm not sure of that. But that's the only ones they ever I'll captured go with though. It. I'll go with it. They never captured any before those two. What? So they had Sony and Bean for 5 years? Or not f- quite five years, but four years? Maybe, yeah, or three even years? Three years, yeah. I believe that's what. I, maybe, I don't know. I, for some reason, I, I heard you say that because you watched it before me. And then when I watched the, um, the episode or whatever, I tried to look. And while I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of what Sonny and Bean look like, I was, uh, I wasn't sure. See, I've got great encyclopedia knowledge on a bunch of things, so just and listen then, to me. And you time. saw it, and you just went, oh, that is Sony and Bean. Well, I kind of just, I didn't actually just saw it and said that was them. I just assumed it was. So, maybe it's not. <laughs> hey, people were saying, so you might be right. Oh, yeah, that's so them, dude. So they've only ever captured two. Never mind, there's three there that they... Wait. Yeah. I, well, th- then it looks like one of them's dead. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I, if you know, let us know. Um, and I'm going to assume that one of those is at least Sonny or Bean because I'm stubborn and I'm not going to say otherwise. Right, hey, that's fine. I'm just equally as stubborn. I'm saying you're a fucking idiot. There's no you don't way. think any of those four <laughs> Titans or I, six or whatever is... At least one is Sonny or Bean. Um... No. I think so because <laughs> I think they've had Sony and Bean for a while. That's how they know that they've lived for three or four years without any food. So they obviously know they don't need any food. Did Was there not a whole thing where they captured another one when they broke into the walls or whatever? Dude, I don't know. I feel like they We should have so watched this in season one. Why did we not? Because, I blame this on, like, Catherine or something. Well, I definitely blame this on you because you told me, yeah, oh, just watch Notre Rats. It's the only important one. That's my impression. I, again, I don't even know if I said that. I don't think I did, but... <laughs> uh, no, I've got video evidence. Here it... No, I'm just kidding. I don't have video evidence. That would be awesome, though. Uh, all right, so with that, I've got another quick topic I want to touch on. Do... Okay, let me start off by saying this. How many pillows do you sleep with? I sleep with three. One between my legs and two at my head. That is so reasonable. Thank you. I don't do anything like that. I have 
too many goddamn pillows. You sleep on pillows? Like, are you on the floor sleeping oh, on pillows? Oh, my. I've just got an entire... No, I don't sleep on the floor with pillows. What are you talking about? So I have... And then my Trav got me uh, my Mikasa pillow, and so now it's just even more ridiculous. <laughs> so I've got a total of... Oh, this is so embarrassing. Uh, I believe... Nine pillows. Nine pillows on the bed? Well, eight pillows. They're all... Uh, now, I can't... Listen, two of them are on either side of the bed kind of filling in the crack. And then I've got you know some around me. I've also... I've obviously How does your I've got, Sudanese boyfriend fit on the bed with obviously you? Obviously, I've that? got Sudanese. <laughs> because he's small. Oh, okay. And it's a big bed. But... Yeah, Mikasa goes in between my legs, and then I've got others just keeping me in my... But here's the problem. I've got too many pillows. I know this, and the reason I know this is because I get tangled up in them, and I constantly uh, am knocking my remote off the bed, and every single time, the batteries fall out. Oh, that's... You need to tape it up. Yeah, well, here's the problem. So it fell one time, and then the battery panel that keeps the batteries in it got knocked loose one underneath the bed and i'm such a lazy piece of shit that i've proceeded over the last six months to just not have a back on it okay. so every time i drop it the batteries go out that's reasonable and then when i get up to find the batteries i just grab the batteries and don't bother looking for the back panel so today i was taking notes and it fell off and I just got on my knees, and the entire time that back panel of the remote was approximately one foot. Wow! Under my bed frame, so I it's hard it. for you to you know reach down and. Well, it's do stuff listen. Like it that. is a lot of work to get down on the floor and then back up again. So I don't blame yeah. myself. And where did you say the Mikasa pillow you slept? Uh, right in between my legs. Be careful. I just want to tell you, be careful because. I believe that that pillowcase is the 15-year-old version of no, 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 no. so uh, no, it's not. Be careful. Because they wouldn't legally be able to print what's on the other side of the pillow if she well, was not at least 18. She's in her scout regiment, old uniform. Yeah, but it's like, uh, it's just like when just I'm... Just be careful. It's like when I have a wife, like a smoking hot wife. Like she's like, I don't know if you heard this part, but she's smoking hot. And she still has like the same exact body size as she did when she was in high school. And, but at this point she's like a nice appropriate 34 years old. She's like super legal and super appropriate. And she's 34. And since she's 34, I say, Hey, put on your high school uniform. And she does that. That's what this Mikasa situation is. Be careful. Me. <laughs> because I can't, because Mikasa is legal at this point, and so I basically just told her, hey. It sounds like you're just rambling on, trying to come up with excuses, and uh, just be careful, man. That's all I'm saying. Well, I don't really like your attitude, and how many times does this guy over here have to talk about... Harji is 35 years old, how many and times I does this guy have stuff to, my face all in her. How many times does this guy have to teeter on the edge of talking about Gabby before I we, said she's an adorable before little Before we get him locked there's up. There's nothing wrong with that, and there's nothing wrong with me wanting to shove my face in Hanji Zo's thing. Something. Put, do the Zoe part. I know they say it different ways, but all people also Hanji say Zoe. Hanji Zoe. Hanji Zoe. And, no, I don't like it that part. I don't like it that way. Well, it's fucking stupid. I'm going to start calling you Cha. That's not, but my name ends with a vowel or a consonant, not a vowel. So, um, but no, just wanted to shout out a couple people who wrote in for the first time this week. We love hearing from you guys. You can write in at the podcast chronicles at gmail.com. So shout out to Jackson. Uh, Thomas wrote in. Manasi. That's a cool name. I hope mm-hmm. I didn't butcher it. You did. <laughs> Um, and then everyone, uh, then we had, this guy didn't have a name. Savannah. We had Savannah for sure. Yeah. She, she might've sent something twice or we have two Savannahs, but we don't know, but we replied to both of them. It came from two different emails. I like it. Savannah, if you just keep making more emails and just keep sending them to us, we like it. And then there was another guy who didn't really have a name. Well, I mean, he had a name. I'm sure he has a name, but it just says 
Albic Albic seven. He's the seventh Albic. So thanks for emailing in, man. But once again, thanks for all the new podcast reviews on Apple Podcasts. Really appreciate it. If you're listening on YouTube, we appreciate you on all your comments. We keep yeah, responding all, all to those. All four of you that listen on YouTube, we really appreciate you guys. The YouTube numbers are growing, and they're out there, and they're chattering, man. Yeah. They're letting uh, we're us know keep that they're... I was going to say, we will have all of the YouTube episodes up by the next Season 4 episode that's released. So you can expect all of them to be up, and then from then on out... It'll be either uploaded on Sunday nights or Monday mornings or Monday afternoons. Nice for the season four. Yeah. So leave us a subscription on YouTube. Leave us a subscription on the podcast apps, and we will talk to you next Sunday. Give us them five stars, them multi stars. Well, don't be a five star beggar. That's just well, yeah, just that's it, a bitch move. Don't do it. At least two. You know just my multi. You know my note about it. What? Don't do it. Okay. And we'll talk to you guys next week for a new episode of Attack on Titan. We're so excited. Um, I did have one last thing to say before we go. I've got my receipt right here. So credit card bill is coming up. Um, you know, I'm 1300 under. Is there any way possible that I can get some of that donation money that we've been getting uh, pretty soon? It's actually the 5th, and I'm going to need it to pay off my... Are you talking to me? Huh? You talking to me? Yeah, the donation money that we've been getting. Right, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I didn't say anything while he was doing that because Chad told me he had this awesome bit for the podcast. <laughs> so I just let him roll with it. We've not received any donations because we haven't asked for any donations because we don't expect any donations. Okay, but at least, you know, at least uh, Patreon. We're on Patreon here soon. We're not on Patreon are we not on anything, dude? So you're telling me I've spent sixteen hundred dollars on equipment. I'm telling you, there's no with way no re- people. Wait, how much money my, did you say? Sixteen hundred dollars, but with no way to return. Yeah, that's any undercutting of my investment. It. At least four thousand per person. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, we're just doing this out of the good of our hearts. Holy shit! I never knew that. And it's gonna be really awkward when we get evicted it from our sucks. studio here. Yeah, but that's the okay, way it we is. We love you guys. This is going on way too long. I don't know why Ronnie would say this at the end of the pod. <laughs> And I, my voice just cracked, and probably... We're really falling off the side of a cliff. And I've he's, yawned 30 he's, times yeah, in the past 10 minutes. He's stuck in the middle of it. I'm a great host. Watch this. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Peace. We love you guys. Peace.